Well, hello and welcome to Crantock Art here in the southwest of England. Uh, today we are going to have a go at making my fox here. Now, this is a template piece. The template pieces are available on Etsy. Uh, you can probably work it out without if you don't want to do that. Uh, but if you do, of course, it helps to support our work and helps to support me make more videos. <clears throat> so <clears throat> what I've done is I've taken the template. Here it is. Uh, I've printed it. I stuck the paper onto some card and then cut round it to give you some nice solid pieces. And I've cut out my sections. So let's start with the body. We also need, before we uh, go too far into this, we need a few tools. So you'll need a knife of some sort of description, something to smooth your clay with. I use a lollipop stick. Uh, you'll also need a teaspoon, something to cut clay with. I've got a clay cutting wire here. If you haven't got such a thing available, get some cotton, some nice strong cotton, double it up, treble it up, and you can use that as a cutting wire. So let's take my first piece. This is my body piece. So I have dried this off a little bit before I started. and We want to make sure that it's firm enough to be able to stand. It is still quite flexible. Hopefully it's going to be all right. We shall see. What I'm then going to do is along the cut edges, I'm then going to score it. So a series of cut marks on both sides, like that. Okay, and get the clay. A bit of wet clay, so this is just what we call slip. It's just clay mixed with a bit of water. And this is going to act as our glue. So we put that along there, and we get our two sides, and we put them together, starting at the bottom. It should now stand up. There we go. And starting from the bottom, we knit it together all the way up to the top. And this will give us a cone. So if you don't want to get the template, start off by making a, your own cone template. And that's your starting point for a fox. Like that. Now to keep those two pieces together during firing, we're going to need a coil. Whoops, that was the banding wheel. So like this, nice thin coil. Same, try to get the same consistency as the clay you're working with. This is quite important. If your clay's, the joining clay you're using is too dry, it will pull away and you'll end up with cracks. So we need to get this now up that join inside. And the best way to do it now is to put the piece flat on the board with the join at the bottom. So you've got something to stretch again. Get our joining tool and then working our way up that crack on the inside, we smooth it either side. So sort of like making a bracket of clay, go up as far as you can. Yeah. And then I'm then going to go to the top, going to work from the top down, so I can get into that at this end. Again, put it on the crack and then work it in. I would do this flat on the board, but I'm doing it like this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, smooth that in as much as possible. And then the tricky bit. You've got to get the bit in between. There's a little section that I've not reached. So I've got to somehow get in there. Put the coil in there. And then if you've got little hands, you can get away with doing this with a small lollipop stick. If you've got bigger hands, you might have to find something else that you can reach in with. So again, you probably can't see what I'm doing. But I'm trying to get right up there, get a join in. And this will stop it from pulling apart during the firing process. If you're using air dry clay, of course, it's not quite so important to, to join them. But even so, you want to make sure that as they dry, it doesn't come apart. Okay, so I've got a coil pretty much all the way up the middle, all the way up, up the way from the bottom to the top. So we can now stand him up. Now where that join is, that's going to be the back of the fox. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to get another coil, nice thin one, paint up that join. With a bit of slip. The reason our slip's slightly different colour to the clay is we're changing over clay suppliers at the moment, so we're sort of between bags of clay. So our slip is made up with the old bits of the old dried clay, and I'm working with the new clay. It doesn't matter though, because they're both buff stoneware, so after firing, the colour's actually the same. It's just at this point, it's not. Let's move that in, not there. There. 
working against the clock a little bit today because we've got a class starting in 29 minutes. So hopefully I can get them done. Right, so we've got the back done. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make his head. So I've got a lump of clay here, it's 160 grams of clay. It's a solid lump. What I'm going to do then is I'm just going to roll it into something a little bit more ball-like. Now in my template, you've also got a piece that you can cut out of the cardboard to make a circle that you can pass the clay through to see if you've got the right size. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to use my cutting wire. You could just use a knife for this if you haven't got a wire. I'm going to lay it on top of the cutting wire, get hold of the thing because it's trying to escape. Oh, yeah. and cut that block in half. I'm then going to use a teaspoon just to hollow it out because if we leave it solid and even as I start to pull it out you can see there's air pockets in there and they would cause the whole thing to explode although it's more likely to explode because it's still damp. If it's too thick it won't dry properly in time and when it goes in the kiln it's going to blow up. I'll take that out fingers. I want to try and get it about three-eighths of an inch. It's about three or four millimeters. Like that. That's one half. Do the same with the other half. Take my spoon hollowing it out. If you've got loop tools they do the job slightly better but as I say you can do an awful lot of pottery without any real pottery tools. Again, check that's the right thickness all the way around. Okay. So now I've got two little cups. I'm going to get my knife. I'm going to score both surfaces. Get some slip. As usual, I've got my slip's got a bit dry. A little bit of water in there. It's better. Slip on it two cups together. Seal them up as best I can as they are, try to get them to match. And then we get a little bit of the clay that we've taken out, roll it into a very thin little worm and put it around the crack. Join it like that. Okay. And we smooth it in all the way around and keep the ball together. Once we've got it sealed, of course, we've now got an air pocket in there which allows us to press against it a bit. Okay. Now I'm just going to smooth it off as best I can with my fingers. In order to make it a little bit more ball-like, I've got a bowl here. Probably the biggest bowl we possess, but it doesn't need to be. And by rolling the clay around in it, I can start to smooth it down, make it a bit rounder. And, uh, there we go. That's better. Now this is going to fit onto the top here. So... But before we do, so it's going to go on like that, a bit like a skittle. But before we do, we need to make sure that we've got an air hole in the head that will allow the air to escape into the body. Again, otherwise that air is going to expand during firing and it's all going to blow up spectacularly. So we stick our knife in, knife and deep, give it a good twist. Make sure it's gone right into the air pocket. Give it a little blow. Make sure that it sounds like you're blowing into a bottle. And now that's ready to go on there. So we score the top here. Get some slip. Put it on. The great thing here, you don't have to worry about scoring the ball. Gravity is going to help you here. So we put it in place, wiggle it until it stops moving, which won't take long because this clay is fairly soft. And then put a coil around it. I'm keeping an eye on this clay. So it is a little bit softer than the model I made earlier. So I'm hoping that it's going to hold together. But what I'm looking for is to see whether it's starting to bulge at the bottom, whether the weight is actually pushing it down. At the moment, it seems to be holding itself together. So we put this coil around the neck. Like that. 
and get my smoothing tool, a good old lollipop stick. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to smooth it in up onto the head, down onto the body, all the way round. Make this a little easier. I'm going to put him up onto the banding wheel. There we go, like that, so I can turn him around. Hopefully you can still see this. So we can get round him, pushing out onto the crack, all the way. Now what you'll find is hopefully when you've done this, that part of it will stick out more than the other. And that will be the front of your face. Like that. So along the join here, actually the head is pretty much in line with the back, but at the front here, you can see how it's sticking out a bit more off the front. So I've got the head on. Next thing, I can put the ears on. So I've cut the ears. Now, already in manipulating them around, you can see that they've changed size, even though we're both cut from exactly the same template. So before I put them on, I'm just going to put them on the board here and cut them so they're both the same size. And these are going to go on, so go to the back of the head. They're going to go on just off the back of the head, so about there in line with the spine as it were so again put a bit of slip on as these are a little bit damp i don't need to worry about scraping them but i'm also not too worried about scraping them because i'm going to be putting a coil of clay over the top of them so let's do that as well like that let's have him facing me okay at this point it'll start to look a little bit like a cat don't worry it'll look like a fox by the time we're finished so let's get his ears on like that. Right, then round the back. Go, whoops. My bowl is trying to escape. Round the back, I'm just going to put a coil of clay there. And another coil of clay behind the other ear. Like that. And then I'm going to smooth them in to the back of the head. Like that. Now, and again, I'm doing this sort of quite quick, rough and ready. Um, you can spend more time on it if you want. Although what I find is best is not to worry too much about finessing everything until you've finished. I have a little phrase that the detail comes last. Because if you spend too much time finessing things, you find that you end up mucking them up later on. You have to finesse them again. So better to just do it all at the end. Next thing I do then, I'm going to give them a nose. So I'm going to take a piece of clay and I'm going to roll it into a nice fat sausage like that okay now that if I put that there you can see that's far too big but that's okay because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to smooth the end down that's going to be his nose at the other end I'm going to push my thumb in and I'm going to make it into like a little cone shape like that okay. and that makes it much better sized but it also gives me a nice surface to stick to. Now, the thing we've got to be aware of, again, is when I put that on, I'm likely to have a little bit of air, yes, a little bit of air trapped in there. So what I want to do, is I'm moving there, first of all, is again, make sure that there's an air hole in so that the air can escape from the muzzle into the head. So putting that bang in the middle, again, put your knife in, give it a good twist, make sure you're right in. Okay. And we get my muzzle. Decide which is the bottom, which is the top. I think that's going to be the top. Put some slip on it. Again, it's very wet clay, so I don't need to worry about scraping it. And attach it like that. Okay. My smoother. Smooth that in onto the head like that. All the way around, underneath. All smoothed in. Sure, look him in the face, make sure his nose is on straight. Okay. You see, he's starting to look much more animal like if I put him on sideways. More dog now than cat. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put his feet on. Well, first of all, I'm going to put his legs on. So I've cut these 
two strips out. Now what I've done with these is I've actually rolled them a bit thicker. The other pieces I've rolled to six millimetres, but these I've rolled to about one centimetre thick. That means that we get a much more substantial leg. I'm also going to have to cut these a bit. They're a little bit long. Um, I probably stretched a little bit since I did the template. So I want it to end just sort of about an inch under his nose. So that's got to come off there. And then having cut that one to size, and then get the other one and cut them both to the same size. I'll take a bit off there. Then we score all the way up. Ah, put a slip on it, put the leg on. One leg there. So these legs on this are very stylized. The great thing about this design is you can actually use this basic template to make lots of different animals. So it's a great starting point for making uh, a dog. A lot of our students have used this to make sort of sculptures of their pets. Uh, Labradors work quite well like this, but also little terriers and things like that. Just by changing the head, you can change the whole thing. And I'm going to get these two little scraps of clay, which I cut off. And roll them into a coil. I'm just going to put them over the top like this. This is going to give him his shoulders. Don't worry about the fact at the moment that it's very square. By the time we finish, we'll have rounded his legs off a bit. So we get that on, push it on all the way around, down onto the leg like that. And his shoulders do the same on the other side. So you can see, okay. Apparently, when I did the template for the, the video for the Dachshund planter. I managed to completely block you out when I came to do the nose. Hopefully you've worked that one out. Okay, right, and he's got his shoulders. Next, I'm going to give him his feet. Then I'm going to take a piece of clay. At this point, I'm actually going to lift him up off the banding wheel because I don't want to stick to the metal. And I'm going to stick him on a piece of wood. There you go. Yeah, smooth that in. Okay, so this is where we start to take some of the edge off those legs, make them a little bit rounder. This is where we have them nice and thick, so we've got enough clay here to, to shape them. To make the feet, I'm going to make a sausage. Like that. Okay, about that sort of thickness, cut it in half. And we wrap this round the bottom of each leg. So, put a little bit of slip on there, put that round there, slip on the other one, put that round there. Okay, get my tool, work it in. Don't be afraid to work it actually onto the body, it'll help to make everything stick together better. All the way around, like that. Same on the other, it'll look like he's got a pair of slippers on now. That's okay. So once we've got it fixed, we can smooth that in a bit. Pinch them a little bit, make them a little bit more paw-like and a bit less slipper-like. If you find that you're having trouble getting things smooth, don't forget, wash your fingers. A bowl of, I've got a nice cup of warm water here because it's blooming freezing here today. Dry it off, towel. And now I'll be able to make a much better job of getting everything smooth. Do that there. Do the same on the other side, smooth it all in. And it starts to look a lot more like a paw. When you've done that, free, make sure your paws are freed up from the board. And lift him up, and turn him upside down. Now you'll have a little air pocket under here, so don't try to smooth that over. But do go around and just pinch it in the bottom here. Keep it all nice and tight and together. Okay. He's slumping a little bit. Come on, stand up straight. Behave yourself. Right. To give him his paws, I'm just going to take my lollipop stick and I'm going to push it in like that. Gives him his little pads. Do the same on the other side. Just smooth that in a bit more. Next thing to go on is going to be his tail, which is here. It's designed to have the end here, the flicky bit, flicking up. So he's going to go over his feet like that. But it can go on the left, it can go on the right, either way. 
Um, the last one I did one way, so I'm going to do this one the other way. So we find the middle of his back, scrape. Now with this you have to scrape all the way along both sides. A bit of slip on there. And make sure. Now it's very important not to get air trapped underneath this, otherwise again your tail's going to blow off. And the trick is to start at the beginning where the tail's going to go there and then to wiggle it all the way around. So you're just, you're just sort of splatting it on and trying to smooth it. You start at one point and you work slowly and steadily round, pressing the clay against it as you go. So it comes up in a nice little twist on his over his leg, which is why we put the legs on first, like that. Okay. Then we go back to the back and you smooth it in like that. So his tail looks like it starts there. All right, a little bit of tidying up on the legs here, that side and that side. And then we finish off his face. So if I bring our example back in here, you can see he's got some side whiskers. Makes him look much more foxy. So what we do is we get some clay, again, we roll it into a sausage cut it in two and we attach these two sausages underneath his ears like that so we give him sideburns that. one goes there one goes there again I can get away with scraping because this clay is very soft sorry it's so gone so cold our heaters have just kicked in <laughs> right, so now I will smooth that in onto the face there, smooth that in onto the face there, and then go around the back, smooth it in again at the back without losing too much of that thickness. We want that coil. But by here, look, and then there. Okay, so it's so like that. Then on the front, we then just sort of whisker it, just using the tool like I did for the pads of the feet, giving us a nice bushy sideburns. Then we've got to give him an eye, or actually two eyes would be really good. And they go, as he's a hunter, they go at the front. So I find a nice chunky paintbrush, like this one, that I can use to make two sockets. One there, one there, either side of the nose, in line between the point of the ear and the end of the nose on both sides. Then we get a ball of clay. With eyes, I like to make a ball of clay and then cut it in half. Like that. And hopefully, I've done a good job of cutting it in half. Both eyes will be the same size, but I haven't. And this is where you start a silly game of taking a little bit off one, a little bit off the other. These are actually very close, but you can probably see if I put them side by side like that, they're not the same size. So let's take a bit off there. Roll it in my hand again to get it round. Okay. okay, and then see if it'll fit in the eye hole. Yeah, just about. Okay, right, again, I think one of them is, I think they're there. Right, then I get the slip, I dip them in the slip, and drop them in the eye socket. Okay, so that's where we find out with his eyes the right size. Okay, don't press it in too hard, but he is going to have, this one is going to have so slightly bulgy eyes. So it's more of a representation than an accurate replica for the National History Museum. Right. I've got two eyes. Next he needs a nose. So we take a piece of clay, flatten it, and then pinch it into a triangle. Like that. This is your standard dog's nose. Okay. And that's going to go on the end there. Now this is a bit thick. If I put it there, you can see he's got one hell of a hooter. So I'm actually going to cut that in half across the back of it, make it a bit thinner, like that. So I can then put some clay on it and put it in position like that. Okay. Smooth it in. Okay, that way is definitely wrong, it's coming out too big. Make it a little bit smaller. 
to tighten it. Eyes are very difficult. A lot of people really struggle with them. And they are tricky. So if you don't, if they're not exactly the same size, it will never look right. Okay. So next, I give him a mouth. So I put a little line under his nose. He's actually got a very thin snout, this fella. So I'm just going to bring it round under his jowls. A little smile there. And he does look like quite a crafty fox. You want to get this one in your hen, hen house? You'll have nothing left. Okay. A wicked little smile there. Okay. Then the last thing is now just to tidy it up. So I'm going to put some marks on the tail. So just some sweeping bits, just to, if you look at this one, bring its fellow back. And now you can put lots and lots of effort into this, getting it looking nice and flowing, a nice effect. And just smoothing and tidying and uh, getting it right. And so until you have, there we go, almost a matching pair side by side. There we go. That's it. That's the video to make a fox. So thank you for watching. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.